Chris Hawes with Flatbed tonight. And the sun is going down in Greeley. It's getting dark. But you know what? Our day just brightened up because we are joined by Member of Provincial Parliament, Goldie Gamari. Goldie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So thanks for being here. Thank you. So you're a new politician. Brand new. No, you haven't been tainted by municipal politics or federal politics. You just came right out of being a lawyer and decided I'm going to make some changes. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I haven't been tainted by politics, but my mom says I've been tainted by law. So, well, that is a, a you know, a, quite a thing to be tainted by. Yeah. So, so I, you know, obviously you're not sitting right now. Okay. The government. Yes, I am. No, I, I know. But as, as, as a member of provincial parliament, oh. you're, you know what I mean? Do you have your office yet? Um, wait, which office? Oh, it's your, your Queen's Park office, yeah. Uh, I will get my office signed uh, this coming week, actually. This coming week? Yeah, and because we're actually sitting on July 11th. So, okay. So, uh, Doug Ford, our yeah. Premier, has said that we uh, are going to be hitting the ground running, and he meant it, so... Yeah, and you're working straight through the summer, or are you going to take a couple weeks off? No, working straight through the summer. Good for you. That's yeah. what I like to hear. I also, I, I'm actually, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see how you are able to navigate as a newbie, the the whole Queen's Park, you know. Me too. Yeah. So so do you have some senior people who are going to help guide you? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm really lucky. Uh, you know, within the party, there's so many strong mentors and role models. Yeah. And uh, I'm just really lucky to be able to reach out to anyone I want and, you know, just say, what can I do? You know, how should I do things? And, you know, people like Christine Elliott, you know, yeah. Caroline Mulroney, um, Steve Clark, Lisa McLeod. You know, John Baird. John Baird is actually uh, one of the reasons I became a conservative. Is he? Yeah. And why is he? One of my role models. Just the way he, he did things was just, yeah. you know, very, very impressive. And, yeah. uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for very him. Very intelligent guy. And he used to get passionate about things. I, yeah. I, I, and that's he actually one of the represented Carlton. That's right. Back. He did. That's yeah. right. Yeah. No, absolutely. I do. I, I recall that. So, I, I, you know, nobody really knows you, you very well because you're new. And we got to know you a little bit in the election, but at the, at the end of the day, our viewers want to know who the heck you are. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Okay. And and you can tell me, you know what I mean, what, what you think. Okay. okay. So uh, if they were to, uh, you know, write a book about your life. Okay. Well, I'm only 33. I know this is the thing, but if, let's call it an autobiography. You're writing it. Okay. What would you call your autobiography? I don't think I'd be allowed to say that publicly. You can't say, oh really? No, I'm joking. No, I'm okay. Joking. Um, I would probably call it out of the frying pan and into the fire. That, you know what? That's a very good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. So let me ask you this. If, uh, uh, you know what? I want you to, because you're new, this might be harder. I should have probably asked this of Pierre, but how would you describe your job to a kid? If someone said, what does a member of provincial parliament do? So I would say that I'm here to help your parents make their lives better so that they can help raise you in a free and democratic society. Um, that sounds like a canned answer. Well, I mean, you know, I, let's put it this way. Like my parents came here back in 1986 from yeah. Iran. I was a year old at the time. Okay. And they came here with um, two suitcases and $50 in their pocket. And the reason that they came to Canada is because they wanted their family to have an opportunity and to yeah. have a better life here yeah. and you know I've never seen my father cry never and the night of the election he had tears in his eyes non -stop. yeah he's and, so proud you know and and it's not just that it's not just being proud it's just he was humbled and, and so am I like I'm so humbled that the people here have given me an opportunity to serve and to help them and to make their lives better and you know to, to make sure that they yeah. and their children have the same opportunities that my family had to, you know, have the best possible life here in, in Ontario. So what's your advice to a young person in any family to become successful in our society? You have to follow your passion and as long as you live your life with the goal of leaving it better than when you first got there, then you'll be successful. So let me ask you this question. What do you think of this whole smoke and marijuana thing all the time? Like the, the legalization of marijuana. I know it's not a provincial jurisdiction because they're doing it nationally, but I mean, it will fall under your government's management. Yeah. So I personally think it's detrimental because, you know, and I think it's like keep the masses high and then they won't complain. 
But what do you think of this? See, I, I like to focus more on rehabilitation than on criminalization. Right. And I just feel like if young people are, are smoking marijuana for whatever reason, if you just slap them with a criminal um, yeah. you know, background, then their life is pretty much ruined. Right. But if you provide them with the proper resources to get the help they need or get the social services or you know, find the underlying root cause of the problem yeah. and help them rehabilitate and help them see that you know, maybe they don't need to rely on on marijuana to to be successful or to be happy. I mean, that's what I would like to focus I on. I think and that's only Cheech and thing. Chong made a career out of that. Everyone else really has to actually smarten up and, and stop doing that. Because I mean, I, I don't know. I like to, I don't like to see, you know, uh, you know, people. I, I know people who are 50 years old who still smoke pot every day. Really? And, and it's, it's actually kind of sad. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, it's bad for your lungs. It causes cancer. It's the same way that tobacco does. You know. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, so so I so you're not going to be getting high on on Queens Park the day that it goes in October. October. I think my dad would probably kill me. He would. <laughs> and you know what? I think that's good. And, and 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 your dad probably means he would kill you as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. See that? that yeah. I grew up with that kind of dad. My father would say, "If you do that, I'll kill you," and he meant it literally. You know. So, and we knew that. That's why we didn't do things that were... <laughs> so, so um, this was a big year for you. It was. Okay. So now your plans moving forward. Okay. You've got basically a week before you move into your office in, in Toronto, in Queens Park. Yeah. What are you going to do? Are you going to want to bender? Maybe Vegas? Something like that? Uh, the only bender I'm thinking about is uh, probably just, you know bending some boxes in my new apartment that need to go in the recycling bin because uh like you know like the premier said doug ford we're hitting the ground running like the day after the election i've received emails from constituents you know people who who really need help you know yeah. families um who are having difficulty getting the medication they need for their children um children with autism you know we yeah. need a public high school in riverside south we need to make sure that the high school in sitzville is being built yeah. and i want to focus on lrt expansion as well so you know there's there's so much you know what right speaking now. of lrt what i love about doug ford he said what the hell are we doing with lrt in toronto he said build subways let's get with it i love a guy with a vision and nothing happens without people with a vision hey, you know what he might be a little rough around the edges but guess what Anybody who got anything done, anytime, anywhere, was rough around the edges. If you're worried about perfection, you'll never get anything done. That's exactly it. And, you know, you're, I think you're going to find that we're a government that's going to be very proactive and not reactive. And I think that's what we need is, you know, learn what the issues are, figure them out, and get them solved before they become a problem. Exactly. exactly. And, and I look a bit like Doug Ford, too. <laughs> I'm going to play him in the TV movie. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, oh wow. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if there is a TV movie, but if there is, anybody, if you're producing it, I would love to play Doug Ford in the made-for-TV movie. <laughs> so you might see me someday just sneaking into Queen's Park. You're going to have to get your autograph before Perfect. I Well, go, absolutely. I'm sitting next to celebrity. Well, now. you know what? It was a pleasure meeting you. I'm glad we got to know a Thank little bit you. about you, the person. Thank you. Okay? Thank we'll get to know a lot about you, the politician, in, in, the, in the months and years to come. Yes. Thank you very much for being on the show. Goldie Gamari, I'm Chris Haas. This has been Flatbed Tonight. Thank you for watching.